Hi, I'm Dodo60, and today I'm doing something a little bit different. I know all of the gaming videos I have on my channel so far are Heroes of the Storm. I'm not going to stop doing Heroes of the Storm, like ever, but I am doing something a little bit different. I was watching Nubkex the other day, I'm going to link to his channel in the comment section down below. Not in the comment section, in the description down below. And he was playing Banished on his stream, I think yesterday maybe, or the day before, like quite recently. And honestly, it was painful for me to watch. I'm, I have played Banished a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I really, really love Banished. I think it's a fantastic game. I think more games should be like Banished. I love it completely. Um, but I was getting a little bit frustrated watching him play this game. To be fair, I feel like he learned really, really fast and picked up loads really, really fast. But I'm just going to do this video. And I was going to do it with, I have loads of mods installed and uh, I can maybe I can go through some of those another time if you want. But I thought the only way I could really do like a fair, the differences I would have done to how he's, how Nub set up his, is to do exactly the same. So that's what I'm going to do. I've got to set it up. I'll call it Do. Doville or something. Um, I'm going to leave it on all the exact same things. Um, one of the mods I've just I've disabled all the mods that I have because I thought that was the only way to do it fair. But one I have um, is Adam and Eve mode, and I think that's super super fun, really hard, and you only start with two people, two people. It's really good fun. But we're going to jump right in to do basically uh, exactly what Nubs did in or Nub did. Sorry. Oops. Um, in his video, except hopefully I'm gonna show a little bit different on how to how to do it. Oh, okay, right. So the split screen thing might be a bit of an issue. Let me just be able to go to the side screen. And now I have these like, like three things that I always have up when I'm playing. I have the event log so I can watch what's happening. I have the map. I normally also always play on large because I feel like you can get like longer gameplay. Oh my god. Okay, so I can't go right. I have to use that. I'm not used to using the keys. Okay. I also think it's a little bit cheating to start off in medium because you start off, look, you start off with a shed, you start off with this. Look at all this stuff you start with. This is actually a really good spawn point. We have st spawned right next to the major river. Now later on you can get a trading post and you can get stuff from this river. Um, but you have to be on the main river. So like if we started off on I mean this one, to be honest, any of these waters, because they're all connected to the main river, would be fine. But in some of the larger maps, these smaller offshoot rivers aren't connected to the main river. And if you put a trading post on that, you're not going to get any boats coming down. You have to be attached to the main river. This one is attached, so we would get trading boats later on. But we're not going to worry about that for the moment. Um, the other thing that I would say that I really like... Oh my gosh, they're so small, there's like nothing here. Um, the other thing that I think Nubs did really did was to put a market down first. I think a market is a super good call. Uh, anyone who's watched this video, I would recommend it. I'm actually linked to the specific video as well as to his channel down below, so you can watch exactly what I'm getting um, inspired by. Uh, it's not a great location. This uh, whole not being able to push over is really bugging me. Okay. Um, just stick it there. The thing is, you'll see that like quite a lot of his people die really, really fast. Um, dying of starvation. When you're playing Adam and Eve mode, like dying of starvation is is not your biggest concern straight away. In Adam and Eve mode, which is the one I normally play because I find it the most challenging and the most enjoyable, which isn't a, like it is one of the mods, but you can, like all the mods are free, so it's not a big deal. But in this mode, like food is your number one priority. Like the first thing you want to be after is food a hundred percent normally i would say put a storage barn nearby but that's really close anyway like i don't I think that won't be an issue the second thing that you need to need to think about nubs did actually ca nubs i keep calling him nubs nub did actually catch on to this like super fast i was getting a bit frustrated at first but really really quickly he caught on that gatherers huts are like the fastest fastest way to get food so i think i have to stick this here it's not ideal there's quite a bit in the water but Let's just whack it there anyway. So I, I really like to lay out everything that I have. like to lay out everything I want built first. And then set them off. I don't really like to set them off before I've got it all laid out. Oh, okay, no, can't go right, I remember now. The other thing is he built... The other thing that Nub did that I was really not a fan of was that he built a boarding house to begin with. How many families have we got? Four. I'm just going to whack these on here. I think we need to probably spread out this way kind of fast, don't we? Okay. 
Okay, so the bridge. If you watch the video, you'll see that Nub's really, Nub really, really struggles to put a bridge down. The thing with this is if you already have a path like placed, you can't place a bridge. You have to place the bridge first, and then you have to back the path up to it. Little, little hint there. Okay, so I think that's a good start. So we're gonna set, oh wow, okay. I think I have some like hotkeys coded in that I hadn't realized I had coded in. We're just gonna set all this to be cleared. We don't want any of this. We want all of these trees. We don't wanna be interfering with the trees that are around our gatherer's hut, but all these trees we want. We already start with a load of resources actually. I'm really not used to starting with all these resources. And we need a herbalist. A herbalist is super, super important. They, your people won't breed won't breed, won't have children if there's no, if they're not healthy. So the, like one of the first things you need to be worried about is getting hold of, we're gonna pause this, we don't really need this right now. Okay, so let's get the fishing shop done as fast as possible. So like genuinely some of the mods I have make this game like a lot more fun, like you can get all sorts of little, you can get little shore houses, you can catch frogs and stuff and snails on these and it's super, super good fun. I'm really not used to playing with this many people from the start. Ah. Okay. So I think, what else do we need? I would also probably place a hunting lock cabin. I mean, yeah, these. This patch is really not that good. Like, it's kind of a good spawn point in that we're right by the main river. Mm, we can't really get across it, can we? Okay. Probably end up placing another. Fishing village down here. So they're just going to be like doing their thing. Right, the next thing that I think is super, super important and is just something I disagreed with Nub on what he did or didn't do, possibly because he might not have known about it, is you want to be building a school like super fast. Right? So the schools, what this does is that you have to put a person in it. Let's find the people out there wandering around, okay. So I don't know how old the kids are. You also need to remember to actually build builders so that they can do the thing. I want to build this. Oh yeah, this little priority tool is so useful. If they're not building something you need built now, up the priority. Because they're just going to do stuff in the order that you place it otherwise. So you see it's not actually saying on here that people are doing it, but I mean the builders are going to go start working on it because they're otherwise they're going to work on this. We're gonna get the fishing cabin done. The fishing cabin is like one of the fastest things to do. You really wanna get them on food as soon as possible. You want this up? Because I don't know how old the kids are. I don't wanna risk any of these children growing up stupid. So the educated workers, all your adults, they, let's see if I can catch one. They all start off educated, right? So that means that they are the most efficient they can be in terms of carrying stuff. They can carry stuff the best. They can do all sorts of really good things. They carry stuff really efficiently. They're fast. They're they're just wonderful in every way and you don't want to lose that at any point. You don't want any of your kids growing up stupid. So we need to get the school built straight away. Um, on Adam and Eve mode again I wouldn't only bother with this for a bit. So they get the houses. So let's get a person in there. Right, so now we know that no one's gonna grow up stupid. So we're trying to get to like winter two, I think, is where Nob got to. And that's where we're gonna try and get to and be in a better position than he was. Sorry, but that's, that's my goal. <laughs> I think I probably am gonna um, like tweet him or something with this video just so he knows I've done it. Because he is definitely the inspiration behind me. You inspire me. Okay, so I want this done. I don't want them like running backwards and forwards to that little thing. I've currently got like a million workers. So I think we don't have to worry too much about. So the builders will always, always prioritize buildings. So, right, so here you go. So you can see one of my kids has already become a student. The negative of the student is it means they don't hit the workforce for a bit longer. That is a definite negative. I'm not gonna pretend that's not. But I think it's really, really worth it in the long run if you're looking for a lasting civilization. The other thing is that some of the mods I have mean you get like a lot more building options and a lot more like food and stuff like that. Huh. I did know that was a base game, I forgot that was part of the base. And it, like at the beginning, it doesn't really make that much difference. 
but late game you can like it's a lot more fun i think to have some of the mods or maybe or maybe if if you guys like this video let me know and i'll do like a different one on the mods that i use and on adam and eve mode which is my favorite starting point i would normally st start hard i feel like starting off with all this stuff is just a bit cheating right these guys have been banished they've been kicked out of their homes they've not had time to pack like a ton of logs and stuff on the way like what no way oh. Play the games it's meant to be played. Or well, you know, don't. Okay, so let's, I agree, let's get some more builders going right now because there's loads. Loads going on that you don't want to So we want the. I think we probably actually want them in homes right now. So all the kids are becoming students. So I think when you start, they normally, like, normally the kids you get are like pretty old kids. They're not like babies, you tend to get like kind of oldish ones. I think with the idea that they hit your workforce faster. But we don't want them to hit our workforce right now. We've got like a million people. Food is going down quite low. Brilliant, we've got this. Yeah, we've still got loads of people, that's fine. <clears throat> I think we're I want to get them all in their houses first. Let's get them all in their houses. Next thing we're going to need is like the first one is always so greedy. And they always take like all of the firewood that's on offer. Always, they always take the whole lot. Normally I would suggest like building a well near here as well, because if there's a fire later on, then you really don't want to die. But I mean, these guys are surrounded by water, so I really wouldn't bother on this one. Oh, the well is really good. So fires are one of the natural disasters that are built into this game. There's also like hurricanes and there's epidemics and stuff. You'd be very unlucky to get it this early on. All right, so you can see teacher and student mommy daddy very cute so they all gonna move in here it is actually more efficient to put the houses like make little localized villages near the key points that is more efficient i just i lose track of them i like to micromanage my citizens okay brilliant we're now out of i'm gonna get rid of two of the builders we're out of um you can only have a two at a time on these so we're nearly running out of logs you see we've burnt through like all of our stashes that we started off with that's not a problem, I'm not too worried about that. So we're all moving in, nice and happily. Ah, so it looks like some of these guys have decided they want to go solo. That's really inconvenient, actually, I'm not happy about that. Let's put that house there. And let's build that house, high priority. You see there's six people left, that's going to be two families, that's not going to be one family, which means I'm still going to have some homeless people. There we go, and there's my two homeless people. So to get them breeding as fast as possible, sorry, having children as fast as possible, we also see their health's already going down. We've already lost half a heart. And look, there we go, there's a baby. So you see, the children, once they hit nine, at some point after they hit nine, before they hit 10, they'll go from child to student. And that's when they go into the schoolhouse, and that's where they're working right now. And they don't work, they don't do anything, they just suck up resources, they are a bit of a drain on your economy. Food is way, way down. We need to um, probably sort this out kind of fast. I'm gonna add another gatherer. Gathering is the most efficient way of getting food at this early stage. Later on, farms are definitely the way forward, but right now, right now we don't have any seeds. In order to grow a farm or an orchard or to have some animal pens, you need to trade for them. More kiddies, yeah. Kids are useless, to be honest, I'm not gonna lie. So at some point, this child's gonna become a student at some point after nine. Normally when they hit between 16 and 18, I haven't quite worked out like when it is, I could probably look it up. It doesn't really bother me. They're sat there for a long time, basically. Then they're just gonna keep soaking resources. They're not gonna produce anything. Oh, I'll get to see food's gone back up. I like to keep it over a thousand, like always. Later on when you've got a much bigger population, 5,000. Never stone is low. Everything's always low. Oh, look, and they gave birth. So at some point this guy's gonna become a student, but not just yet. We want this to be built. What, are we out of wood? Yeah. Okay. Right, so I think this is like, we've got off to a really strong start here. I like how it's looking. We've got kids being trained up, so they're not gonna be just a drain on society forever, because they're so much slower. I'm not, I haven't looked up what the like deficiency is that you get, but like, it's pretty huge. You're still homeless. Oh yeah, you're still homeless. Why is, why have we not got anything coming to this? Come on. I can see we got wood, or we did have wood. Ah. Let's get this built. I also think we need more wood, so let's 
get these knocked over. So you can use that priority thing on anything that's left to do apart from roads. You can't prioritize roads. Builders will always work on roads if there's nothing else for them to work on. So if there's no, um, so like right now they couldn't work on this, it's not ready to be built. So you need one more log. There you go, so that guy became a student. There he is. So yeah, right now the builders would be, if there's nothing else for them to work on, they're probably working on roads. But once one of these goes up, they'll immediately prioritize the building. And everyone's got their own home. Marvellous. So we're going to be breeding. Yeah. Which is exactly what we want. We want these people to be happy little breeders. Marvellous. Right, let's get this built. Another thing that I think you learn really fast is that you get through your stuff super, super quickly. Now, the other issue, the thing I'm a bit worried about at the moment is the health. Because if they get sick, they start dying. We don't want them to start dying yet. We don't have like a sustainable population. Right now that's an issue if they start dying. And they'll start dying if they get unhealthy and they'll get unhealthy if you don't look after them. Same as all of us. If you don't give them things that they need to stay healthy, they'll start dying. And they need um, herbs, that's what they need. They need a varied diet, but there's not much we can do about that right now. We have the gatherers doing their thing, we have the fishermen doing their thing. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, they're doing good work. 800 is not bad for two. Let's see. Gatherer's Hut is like the most efficient way of getting food in this early stage. It was actually kind of hampered a little bit by, see how all this is in the water, all this is in the water, this which is covered by buildings. These, you suck that up. But there's like a couple of things that I, I would ideally not have, but not much we can do about it. Whereas other builders, good. The other thing to note is that if there's nothing for the builders to do, they'll fill in as laborers. They'll do the jobs that the laborers would otherwise do. If all the roads are built, if there's no buildings awaiting construction, I mean, the, the builders are just going to pick up resources, they're going to chop down trees, they're going to do other stuff like that. There we go, let's get you cracking out. So we've now lost our workers. We always want to have one worker, yeah, yeah, see, so this is saying that this house doesn't have any firewood. That's not a problem, because if the people who live in this house, if any of these people get cold, they'll just go and hang out with one of their friends, right? They will share wood, it's not a big deal, but we just, we don't, if they all start running out and then there's no wood to go, that's when, that's when people start dying of the cold, and we obviously don't want that. Dying is bad. We want to keep everyone alive for as long as possible. What's happening? We're running out of firewood always. That's fine. The other thing that's really, really important to keep an eye on is just making sure that they don't have to go too far. Yeah, you, so he, that little circle means that he do, he's run out of wood. He doesn't have any wood to turn into firewood. Bless him. I'm like, chop wood and to make firewood. And he's like, I can't, there's no wood. That's okay, he'll go, if that happens, he'll go work as a labourer until until there's more wood. And then as soon as there's wood, he'll go back and chop some wood. So we have a forester who should be collecting wood, but one forester's not really going to sustain all this plus all the building that we're doing. There's not much that he can do. It's not really his fault. So I think we're good. we don't, we've got a little bit of firewood left now. I'm going to stop making firewood. It's summer, so now is the hottest time of year. Now's the time they can be out of the house for the longest possible time. So now is not a good time really to have fire, to do any kind of internal thing. So like a tailor or a blacksmith, those ideally you want to do at winter where they get cold and they can't walk as far. You want to be doing that at winter. Yeah, so now we've got a herbalist. Let's go make that guy a herbalist. He'll start collecting herbs. He'll put them in here. That's not really where I wanted actually. Let's uh, prioritize this. We want that done next. See, food's going up nice and healthily. We like that. That is very, very good. Right, so Nub in his video, he looked at the town hall and said it's a census thing. It is a census thing. That is exactly what it is. But it also gives you the opportunity to get nomads who will just show up one day and be like, hey, can we, can we join your town? We like it. And then you get new people added, which is really fun, especially... Okay, right, I'm going to go on about Adam and Eve mode a lot because it really, really is my favourite way to play. But in Adam and Eve mode, you can create an entire town from two people. That's a very, very inbred town. Now, whilst there isn't any negative to that, like they're not slower or more stupid or like iller or anything because of that, there's none of that is built into the game. But I mean, for me, that feels a little bit like, oh, I've got a population of 300 that all started with these two people. That's a very inbred town. So whilst that's not actually an issue, I like to feel that by accepting nomads into that town, I am bringing in a bit of new breeding stock, changing the bloodlines a little bit. Ah, oh, brilliant. So some of our um, 
kids are starting to grow up into laborers. Now that is a good thing. It means we have more people hitting the market. Also means, however, they're going to want their own houses. These guys are adults. They don't want to be living at home with mum and dad. Not an issue. We'll just build them some new houses. That's fine. But we still have two new people to allocate. So let's put one. We need wood, like, really badly. So let's stick one there. The what in Nub's video he had his sense like his data of what who does what the whole time up, like constantly. That's not. I wouldn't say that's like not a good thing to do. That is definitely useful, but man, I I don't know. I just feel like I kind of keep track of that. Just kind of out of habit. I play this game a lot. <laughs> I'll have a look at some point at how many hours I've spent on this game. So these guys, they're they're fine living at home. Like these adults fine living at home they're not gonna get across they're just not gonna have any children they're not gonna reproduce so you can actually control your population and how fast it grows and all that sort of thing you can control all that lot oh, it's down again so even though it's autumn we're gonna stick someone in there you can control how fast your population grows by building houses or not building houses if you want to calm down the population growth stop building houses they won't move out they won't have children nifty Oh, don't do you give us all the best tips. Oh, I know, you're welcome. I'm so glad you're enjoying my videos. So we're hitting winter again. We're now in late autumn year two. We're about to hit winter. We're looking in pretty good shape, to be honest. We've got plenty of food. We're running out of clothes, but we haven't built the hunting cabin yet. Until we built the hunting cabin, I mean, we can queue up. The, 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 the people, the townsfolk, they will build items in the order that you lay them down. So if I lay them down in a certain order, oh, we've got another one, perfect. So if you lay them down in a certain order, they will um, they will build them in a certain order. I feel like the mods that I use also slow down the aging process, because these guys I feel like are aging up super, super fast compared to what I'm used to. So I am just going to put all my houses in like one stretch, I know that's really bad, but keeps them neat. All about the neatness. So we've got our wood, firewood's going up, that's wonderful. Builders are going to work on that. And then we can get some hunters going. The hunters will, see these little deer, where are they gone, there you go. These little deer, the hunters will go out, they'll shoot them, they'll collect the leather from them, they'll collect the meat from them. You eat the meat, you turn the leather into clothes in the tailor. You can also, later on, once you've traded and got some sheep, you can also, or cows, you can use the... Let's get rid of one of the builders now, we probably don't need them. We do need these houses to be built though, pretty sharpish. Yeah, 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 always out of wood. Always out of wood. So we've got two foresters, they'll hopefully do their freaking jobs and start to produce a bit more foresty stuff. We've now got the herbalist going, so you can see that he's making medicines, he's treating people. We're now maintaining our health at four and a half hearts, which is fine. If it goes, like, four hearts is fine, three and a half, people start getting sick and dying. Much lower than that, you're getting in trouble. You don't want to be getting much lower than that. Cool. So spring, I'd really like to have about a hundred firewood. I really would like about a hundred firewood hanging around. I don't really want to knock down these trees because I'm thinking another little like mining community would be really, really useful. Oh. Okay, so we've run, uh, we've hit the limits. I think these limits are defaulted to super low. I'm just going to add a load of zeros to that. So. I know this has been kind of an intense video, I've been kind of um, just going for it. We've now got past when I've got to, we're now into spring three. You can see we've got a really thriving little town, it's going really well, people are super happy. It's not going badly to be honest, this is, this is going alright, we'll take it. I'm also just going to build, I know it's a bit morbid, but at some point people are going to start dying. Let's see if we can build this here, too large. They get really unhappy if they have to dump their dead loved ones in the forest, right? <laughs> they don't like that. Nobody likes that. You want to have a proper grave place or a proper way of mourning your lost loved ones, your loved lost ones. Okay, let's get two of those on. Because again, food is like critical. Food doesn't spoil. It's not going to go off. It'll just sit here. There you go. There's the venison. So the these guys have been doing their thing very, very well. So I hope that's like a little bit of a useful video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's a little different. I know it's been, it felt, like a, it felt to me like a little bit of a rush, but I don't think it is. I feel like 
because I'm used to the slightly slower pace of the Adam and Eve mode, this felt like a bit of a rush for me. But you can see we've got a really healthy, prosperous town. They're self-sustaining. We've got lots going on. We've got lots ready to be built. And they're pretty happy. They're doing all right. These guys are not caring that they've just been booted out of their civilization. They're building their own community, and it's going to be marvelous. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Please let me know if you want to see more of this kind of videos, if you want to see the Adam and Eve mode and all the mods that I have installed, if you want to see me do that sort of thing. If you don't mind the change from Heroes, a little bit different, I know. But this is genuinely one of my favorite, favorite, favorite games. And I was getting really upset watching it be not played like I'd play it because <laughs> I'm a bit of a control freak, I think. And this works really well for me. Like you get to micromanage like all these building placements and everything. And it's like a survival game and a town building game. I really enjoy this game. So I hope you enjoy watching this. Let me know in the comment section below. Until next time.